It's not, again, being equally yoked with the world. It's being equally yoked with Christ. And when Christ puts it in my heart, he will give me rest. He will give me peace. He will give me joy. God sustains us. If you build anything without God, you're going to have to maintain it without God. So Jesus invites us to come into that yoke with him, to be bound with him, not bound to the world or religion or man's opinions. You get your blessing. You get your house. You get your next check. You're the first millionaire. But what if we start centering the gospel around Christ, where it's like, you will suffer for his name's sake. And he says, don't be entangled again to a yoke of bondage, but stand fast in that freedom that Christ has made you free. And I really believe that's a word for all of us, that you've been set free. If you're listening to this podcast, God has set you free. Well, God bless you, fam. We are talking about rest today and how to find rest in Christ. And, you know, I, I think about rest in general, just kind of going straight into it. It's not when you stop. Resting is not when you stop. People think that when you have to rest, you have to stop. And that's not the case. And that's something we're going to really break down, like finding our rest in Christ. What does that actually mean? It, rest is not a prerequisite or, or saying, hey, I, you to be lazy, right? We're not talking about lazy Christianity especially if you guys are listening in, it's it's labor Christianity and being able to, what Ecclesiastes tells us, to enjoy the fruits of our labor. So I think we're going to find that balance in what rest is and how to really find that in the Lord. And what does it actually mean? Uh, I'm sure you guys have heard a lot of different uh, ways, but I think the the big thing, like what Simply Uncaged means, right, being renewed in the mind, but I also believe being renewed in the mind is also redefining the definition behind words. And figuring out what does that actually mean according to the word of God, not our own experiences, not our feelings, not the world's definition, but according to the word of God. And that is our goal to get those types of revelation. So we're going to open up some scriptures. We're going to talk about rest today. I just feel like what we're doing as the body of Christ is there is a move of God that takes place and it doesn't come with idleness or being passive. You know, I, I believe in active Christian over passive Christian. And this is what God wants. He doesn't want checklist Christianity. He doesn't want clock in Christianity. He wants a lay my life down type of Christianity. And what does that really mean to the believer? Okay, because the flesh will force you, but the Holy Spirit will flow with you. And if we can submit to God, surrender to God, the Holy Spirit will flow. And in those moments, we will find rest through our uh, journey. And I just know the Holy Spirit's going to flow. So, Amen. Yeah, let's talk about this, bro. Amen. I love how you said rest isn't when you stop. And when you say stop, you're talking about working. You're talking about laboring. But I would say that rest, uh, rest is when you stop striving working for acceptance, working for approval, working to please man. But just like you said, rest isn't when you stop working or laboring because we believe in, in labor Christianity, just like you're saying. We believe in, in laying down your life, picking up that cross. And wow. that's, that's a good. hard calling. <laughs> that's good. That's a hard calling to deny yourself daily and pick up that cross and follow after Jesus. And Man, there's there's pain and there's suffering. I believe in that and and rejection and and that stuff will come. So rest isn't when we stop, you know, working or serving Christ. Rest is when we stop serving the world. Mm. Rest is when we stop serving man's opinions. Rest is when we say, "Hey, I want to sit here in Christ and and be found in him." Wow. This is going to be good already. Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's good. That's a whole rema right there. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I was going to open up here in Matthew 11, of course. I'm sure you guys know this scripture here in Matthew 11, 28. Jesus says, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is is light. And I'm really happy that we're, we're talking about this word because I believe a lot of people, you know, they know this scripture. They may know it by heart and they're asking, you know, God, where's this rest? 
where's this rest? I'm, I'm serving you. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to find this rest, but I'm, I'm working so hard. And how can I really find this rest? And Jesus says that this rest is, is for our souls. We talk a lot about the soul here at Simply Uncaged, the soul being the mind or the innermost thoughts, your will, meaning your, your, your deepest desires, and then your emotions. So Jesus promises uh, this rest mm. for our souls, for our souls really to, to take root in Him and in His Word and, and to be yoked with Jesus and His Word. And so what is the yoke? To yoke really, it means to be bound. So it comes from this word where there was two oxen plowing in the field and the oxen, they always plowed together. They always worked together as one unit, two yoked together. So Jesus invites us to come into that yoke with him, to be bound with him, not bound to the world or religion or man's opinions. So I know that there's so many different things that uh, we can be yoked to, mm -hmm. and I believe we'll look at those things. But just looking here at Matthew 28, this this invitation really, it's really a, I see it as an invitation to to come to Jesus and a, a promise mm -hmm. that will be fulfilled when we accept that promise and and uh, take it upon ourselves to really uh, learn. Jesus says, mm -hmm. "Learn from me." Mm -hmm. So I think in learning it, it involves you know opening up the Scripture seeing what the Bible says, seeing what the Word says, because the, what the world says is different. But the Word says, hey, don't, don't conform to the world. Don't conform to the world's systems, mm -hmm. patterns, behaviors, attitudes, beliefs, hierarchy, so many different things in the world that, man, we don't want to conform to. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Did you have anything on that? <laughs> yeah, I think it's cool, be, like, because I, you know, I open up, I'm like, hey, you gotta, it, it means, it, it doesn't mean a stop. It mean like, re that's not what rest is. And I like how you elaborated, because that's what we need. We need to, we're like, what do you mean it doesn't mean to stop? And you talking about, like, the being equally yoked. Uh, but stop conforming to the world. Stop being under man's opinion, man's approval. Stop being under a religious way of thinking or legalism and the yoke of bondage i know we're going to talk about that just being under bondage and when you're in bondage you're in you're in you're a slave to something whether that's mm -hmm. fear whether that's insecurity so it's mm -hmm. like stopping that but not stopping to labor for christ and that's where the the power of the holy spirit will really empower us so just you know really breaking this down and, and really learning what it what it truly means to rest in christ because I believe we're in this, you know, we talk about this a lot in this in this generation hustle culture, right? Going yeah. to the next to the next. Like, I'm not against laboring as the Lord leads you, but we are against overworking yourself outside of the grace that is on your life or the mantle that God has given you. But I think everyone has a, a measure of grace and, and God has given us uh, gifts according to the measure of grace that is on our life. So that's why when, when it says in him, we'll find rest because in Christ we'll find security in Christ we'll find identity, right? We're not moving because we think that, oh man, I, I have to uh, obtain this, this title or I, I, I find security in a, a job or I find security in uh, that promotion and I didn't get it, but the person that I was going head to head with was the one that got it now. Like now all is lost and now you feel tormented because mm -hmm. your faith was put in that promotion, that title. So I, I think there's so much we can, we can break down in that. And just knowing that, you know, when we talk about rest, it's not just saying to sleep. Yeah. Right. Rest comes according. And I think the most simplest way I can see it is according to abiding in the calling and the purpose and the assignment that Christ has for you and every person, every individual is always going to be different. You know, you and I, we woke up today and we got tasks that we have to do for the day to expand God's kingdom. And our tasks are different. The way that you see things, the way that I see things, it's, it's, it's different. And the, 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 the things that God has us to steward is different. And I just think that's amazing to know because it all comes 
under the power of the Holy Spirit, but it's it's seeking God for that. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's so good. You mentioned a really some really good things. One important word that I love that you shared on was identity. Mm. And identity is such uh, a big drive behind a lot of people do what they do. Mm. And they attach their identity to that paycheck or to mm. that promotion or, or being the young CEO or being the young millionaire, which is why we get hustle culture, right? Because if if right if they don't uh, achieve that status or if they don't make that amount of money, mm-hmm. then who are they? Right? They're they're a nobody. They're they're a a failure. They you know they didn't make it. They're they're just you know another average Joe. That's what the world says. Mm-hmm. But in Christ, our significance and our identity is found in Him, in being a child of God. So even just the identity itself is one thing that a lot of people they they strive and they work from to try and find acceptance in identity and that leads to a weary soul Mm. that leads to a weary soul so fast but when we labor and we're working you know for for christ in christ it's like this this fuel that his love fuels us that that he was murdered for us Mm-hmm. on the cross and some people don't like it when i use that language <laughs> but for me that's the gospel yeah. like that's as like pure and raw and real as it gets like jesus murdered on the cross that's the love of christ that was poured out for us on that cross and man i, I can labor for that <laughs> yeah. right I, I know we can all we can work for that we can labor for that yep or just to to see other people too I was actually breaking down in tears the other day thinking about an elder in our church who's over 70, you know, post knee surgery and seeing her labor and her work, you know, because of the love of Christ. And, you know, I can I can yoke with that spirit and with that love and and push forward for that. So, yeah, we so now we're talking about work and we're talking about hustle culture and yeah, there there is work, there is labor. And we should be seeking to increase our labor in Christ. Yeah. But if it's from identity, then man, your soul will get real weary. Yeah. And it'll get real weary very fast. Wow. I just, I'm glad you're even sharing about that. Like even people that are a lot older, you know, and you see their love for God and just pushing every day, even though age will never, you know, age can come here in the mind and be like, well, I'm too old. And something I just heard right now is, and it's in the book of Proverbs, laziness leads to poverty, but labor, le- your labor should lead to your identity in Christ Jesus. And if we can labor according to who Christ is in our life, and I think that's why we all need a revelation of who Christ is. You know, John the Baptist, he did what was crazy. He had a crazy diet, locusts and honey, and people thought he, he was the crazy one. And he's out here, the voice that is crying in the wilderness, making the, the path straight. But it's so interesting because when John John the Baptist never met Jesus, but when he did meet him, he knew him as the Messiah, as the anointed one. He's like, mm-hmm. I've never seen him, I've never known him, but I know this is him. This is the one that I'm making the, the path straight for. So I think we all need a revelation of who Christ is, and we will labor while the world looks at us as crazy. Even the religious folks thought John the Baptist was crazy. Like everyone thought he was crazy. And people might think that the way that you move in the kingdom is just crazy. But really, forget the word crazy because I'm just giving you all that 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 that, that uh, meaning and the, and the words around it. I, I think it's, it's different because that's how kingdom people are. We're built different. We see different. We hear different. We move different. And the world, it might not make sense. That's why we call it crazy because it might not make sense. But to God, it makes miracles. And I think if we can abide by that and renew our mind, and that's really what it's about. It's renewing our thoughts and minds where, where the world just doesn't, doesn't agree with sometimes the things that we do. And it's not, again, being equally yoked with the world. It's being equally yoked with Christ. And when Christ puts it in my heart, he will give me rest. He will give me peace. He will give me joy. God sustains us. And if you, and this is the thing, if you build anything without God, you're going to have to maintain it without God. But if you build it with him, 
he will help you maintain it and you will be sustained through him. And that's what I see rest is, being equally yoked with, with Christ. Amen. Yeah, that's really the question behind rest is like, what are you yoked to? Mm -hmm. What are you yoked to? Where are you working from? Like, what is the the root that is, you know, carrying out the, the fruit of your everyday life? Mm -hmm. Or, yeah, what is the root or the spirit driving behind what you do? And you mentioned purpose and calling and assignments and knowing that grace that is upon your life. And in knowing that, we can't, we can't look at anybody else. We can't look to the left or to the right. And sometimes we're going to look crazy. <laughs> we're going to look like John the Baptist and... Yeah, God really, he calls us out as different. He calls us out as voices crying out in the wilderness. And there's a consecration to that. No matter where you are, you could be serving in a church or you could be working at a, a mall somewhere in Pittsburgh and you can still be that voice crying out in the wilderness. You can be in the fashion industry, but you're, you're consecrated. The way that you do it is just separate in it. And it's different because you're, you're driven by that voice in your ear which is the Christ, the Messiah, mm -hmm. his word, and you want what you do to honor him. And in doing that, yeah, you look a little bit crazy. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking now about Mary of Bethany, and for her to find her rest, she, she looked crazy too. She came to Jesus at his feet. This is post-resurrection uh, of Lazarus. They're there, you know, the table is set, having this meeting or having this supper, this dinner. And then Mary comes in with this alabaster flask and she finds her rest dumping out a year's worth of wages at the feet of Jesus, wiping Jesus' feet with her hair. And Judas, who is, you know, all about the money, mm -hmm. she, she looked crazy to Judas. And also the religious people. Yeah. <laughs> she looked crazy to the religious people. But for her, she was she was coming to his feet and, and finding that rest, finding her identity. She wasn't thinking about what anyone thought. And I think it's like that, um, you know, serving Christ. It's like that working for God is that, you know, we're just at the feet of Jesus. Sometimes there's tears. Sometimes it's it's messy. There's, there's healing involved. Mm -hmm. And yeah, but when we're just willing to really like pour out our oil at his feet, uh, God gives back. Jesus gives back. And in doing that act, Jesus says, this will be remembered. Whenever it's told about me, this story will be told as well. And so, you know, here we are 2,000 years later telling this story, just like Jesus said, because she was willing to, to pour it out and, and find a rest at Jesus's feet, not caring about what religion thought about her, not caring about what the Judases thought, and not even caring about what the disciples thought, but just really coming to, to please Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Wow. I just heard, uh, or re remember this while you were speaking is, uh, five years of working in the flesh doesn't compare to five minutes of laboring in the spirit. Like there's no amount of work you can do in the flesh that will compare to the empowering grace of the Holy spirit on your life, how it empowers us. Mm -hmm. And again, all these different examples that you're, you're giving it's, it's showing us that like when when God is pleased, Christ be glorified. And you also gave an example of like somebody that's in fashion or like retail, like they can even be used. And what religious folks will tell you is, show me a Bible verse on where you can be used in the fashion industry. Right? And I'm sure we can break it down, uh, give a lot of different verses on calling, on purpose, on mantles, on assignments, because that's really the Bible verses that go around it. And it's interesting because you also said that whisper that whisper of like Christ while you're out there in the marketplace, while you're being used. And that's another thing. Like I can give you guys a, a very practical example. When the Holy Spirit tells you to make a right on that street and it was because you, you save 30 minutes of traffic and you never go that way on your way home or usually on your way back. Like show me in the, in the scripture where the, the Holy Spirit tells you or in scripture, show me a Bible verse where it tells you to turn right on this street in Las Vegas. Like you're not going to find that. And I think people, they get so like, well, I need a Bible verse for every single thing. That is true, but I just believe that's not fully correct, right? 
this is where we need two things when we're fellowshipping with with uh, the Lord or just with others. We need the Word of God, and we need the Spirit of God. So this also comes in that balance because I think there's always going to be a lot of people that ask like, how do I know that? Because I feel because some people are like, well, I feel tormented. I'm like, well, what if it's you need to, needing deliverance from pride or rebelliousness, right. right? Because I think there's this level of surrendering and submissiveness to God to find rest in God. The Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil. I feel like some of us get tormented, yeah. like King Saul, because we submit to us and resist God. Yeah. So we have to know where is our heart when it comes to laboring. And again, Andrew shared it. We have to know the intentions behind why we do what we do. One of those things is people think that making more money is evil. It's not, but also people find their identity in how much money they make, mm -hmm. which that is evil. You know, there's a saying that wealth isn't bad. It becomes dangerous when wealth has you. Money isn't bad. It becomes dangerous when money has you. It's the same thing. And I think it all stems with the inside, the seed, because the seed is what bears the fruit but then fruit also comes from the root. So it's like figuring out really what is the intention. And once we can figure that out, I think in your labor, you will find rest in Christ because your heart is just like, Lord, I really wanna serve you. You're not just saying it with your lips. Like I wanna serve God, but then inwardly you're serving the devil. That's what the Bible says about wolves in sheep's clothing. Inwardly they're wolves, outwardly they're, they try to look like sheep. And that's what religion does. Religion makes you look like something on the outside, but you're not even changed on the inside. But the relationship, the, the power of the Holy Spirit changes inside, then it goes out. So we need to really audit ourselves. We need to audit our life. We need to know. And this is, again, all coming back to why am I feeling tormented? Because, you know, we hear this a lot. Sleeping 10, 12 hours a day is not rest. Yeah. You know, and I think that's another topic that we can really go into, but... Really, it's like that is not rest, sleeping, because you can still wake up tormented. You can still wake up confused. You can still wake up weary. How many of us have slept for so long thinking that we're going to feel rested after a 10, 12-hour uh, sleep? It's not always the case. So that comes, I believe, and I'll make it simple, with our alignment to be in God's will. Amen. Yeah. That's so good. You mentioned so many good stuff. I know, there's like a lot, a lot different. <laughs> Since you mentioned sleep, yeah, J Jesus says, don't worry about your life. Do not worry about your life. Like, what is your life? One thing that I've been meditating on is I'm just dust. God, I'm just dust without you. Like, unless you breathe your spirit in me, I'm just dust. That's good. But you can sleep. You can, you can have dreams that are, like, you can worry in your dreams. Or you can be anxious in your dreams. So yeah, mentioning 10 to 12 hours of sleep, but yeah, you had dreams, or maybe you didn't have dreams, you just had an anxious spirit, or you had a, a, a weary spirit, or a worried spirit in your sleep. So that's what you were resting in for 10 to 12 hours, and that's probably why you needed 12 hours of sleep. But come, come to the feet of Jesus at night. <laughs> pray, g give him that thing at night. A lot of times it just needs to happen with our voice and we need to actually pray over that thing that's concerning us and release it to him in faith. There needs to be faith there that God is going to work that thing out, whatever it is, at your job, at your work, in your business. Release it to him at night and then rest in Christ at night and wake up refreshed in his spirit, believing his promises. So yeah, I just love how you're talking about uh, in the spirit and giving mm -hmm. these examples, these practical examples of laboring in the spirit. And then to go contextually too, in Galatians, Paul talks about being in the spirit because mm -hmm. the church of Galatia was a people who begun in the spirit, encountering the grace of God, beginning to follow Jesus in that spirit of grace. But as they continued to go, mm -hmm. they tried to make themselves perfect in the flesh to the point where now they were going back to the law, trying to follow the Old Testament law mm -hmm. again when the, the grace of God already hit them. And he says, don't be entangled again to a yoke of bondage, but stand fast in that freedom 
that Christ has made you free. And I really believe that's a word for all of us, that you've been set free. If you're listening to this podcast, God has set you free of something. And now you got to stand fast in that freedom. Amen. Watch out for the world. Watch out for the lies of the devil. Watch out from trying to place your identity in anything out there in the world. And stand in that freedom. It's nothing like the, the freedom of Christ. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is liberty. Yeah. Yeah. Hey Amen. It, it always goes down to, again where we have to focus on, on on the Lord. And I think a lot of people, they don't know what that looks like sometimes. Cause you know, Andrew sharing like, yeah, you have to, you have, you have to know that one, there's freedom in Christ and just standing in that. And I think that's so encouraging and something that we hear a lot or often, and it's our ability to believe it. Right, we, we have to really believe that. Like, I get it. You've been in church most of your life. You know all the major Bible scriptures, right? And you say it, but like, it's one to say, which is a great start to just proclaiming. It's, a, it's another to believe what you're actually proclaiming. So like, we hear this a lot. We hear this a lot. And to, even to me, it's very encouraging. It's like a good reminder. I, I'm hearing the Holy Spirit speak through Andrew right now. And I'm like, yeah, there's freedom in Christ. There is freedom in Christ. And it's just that reassurance over and over and over again and uh, proclaiming that. You know, I, I was uh, even looking at Genesis. And in Genesis, because whenever we study like any words or anything, like it happened in the beginning. And uh, G, or God even rested, right? Genesis 2, verse 1, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the hosts of them were finished. Verse 2, And on the seventh day God ended his work, which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day, sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. And I think this is such a, a rema when it comes to rest, because it's like, well, look, God even rested. And a lot of people will say that. Well, God rested after he labored those six days to create everything that we see, everything that we're experiencing today. Yeah, he did. But rest came after the labor rest was a reward to what needed to be done. And I think that's something we need to understand. Um, in this context, rest, it, it actually does mean to stop and abide. And I think that's the whole thing that we're kind of talking about is to stop and abide in God, meaning I finished my task. Now I've stopped. I'm resting because my resting is found in abiding. And I think if we can understand that, because it took him X amount of days, six days to do what he did. And then it says he sanctified and blessed the day. And I think that's something we need to do. Like rest isn't entertainment. Mm. Like sometimes like, okay, I'm going to go rest. I'm going to calm my mind. Like I've heard that so many times. I'm going to calm my mind and go watch Netflix. I'm going to calm my mind and, and go watch something entertaining. And I'm not saying that's bad. I'm not going to get legalistic and religious and say that's bad. What I'm saying is don't, don't attach that habit every single time you're done resting. Like sometimes you got to rest and go into your rest is just me sitting in the presence of God. Your rest is sometimes just like listening to something that is uplifting or encouraging or even something biblical, something that just, again, lifts you up and encourage you. People see resting as their mind as entertainment mm -hmm. versus resting your mind. And, and again, when God rested on the seventh day, the scriptures say he blessed it and sanctify it. So what I'm learning is after our labor, we got to bless and sanctify, separate, consecrate, right? Separate ourselves. Sanctification is separating ourselves from what? From the things of this world. Because sometimes after your labor, you might look at it and be like, you might even question it sometimes. And then you go back and do the exact same thing that got you in the mess in the first place. It's like God's giving us answers. He's giving us instructions. And then we're like Israelites in wilderness going in circles. When God's like, hey, you labored. To, and I gave you instruction in that labor so that you can break generational curses so that the blood of Jesus can set you free from the past. And I think this is the power of what rest does. And I'm just getting this revelation right now. This is what labor does. It, uh, our, our labor comes in, in, in this uh, sequence, labor, rest, rest is the reward. Hmm. 
So going right back to what we were talking about is like when I when I was sharing like uh, resting does not mean stop because that's what we always think it is. But from a different perspective, it means to stop listening to man, stop being in the will of man, stop being under religious doctrines, stop allowing your flesh to to win the battle. We're talking about Galatians. It's so interesting because the flesh and the spirit are contrary to one another. They're warring against one another. Galatians literally gives us the answer on how to overcome the flesh. It never says fight the flesh with flesh. It never says to uh, entertain it or focus on it. It says to walk in the spirit. That's literally what it says. Walk in the spirit, Galatians 5.16, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So it's like, don't even think about the flesh. Just walk in the spirit and the flesh will be overcome. I think that's how we're able to overcome laziness, overcome this entitlement that we have as Christians. Like if you ever look at Christianity of like, you know, I'm not going to say all churches, but there's churches that will preach a me centered gospel. You get your blessing, you get your house, you get your next check. You are the first millionaire. But what if we start centering the gospel around Christ where it's like, you will suffer for his name's sake. You will be, be go, go through trials. You will mm-hmm. go through storms. You may feel weary, but in Christ, you will overcome. But in Christ, right? So once we start to shift our focus from entitlement about the gospel center around me, we will be set free from what we think rest really is. And it becomes free because again, going back to what Andrew said, freedom comes in him. When, when the gospel becomes centered around Christ, it's not about your next blessing, your, your, your next boo, your next marriage, your next promotion. God does give all that. He gives all those blessings. But I think the biggest thing is when we can suffer for his name's sake, that the present time, the present suffering of this moment does not compare to the glory of what Christ has for us and the future of what God has for us, that better days are ahead. If we can go around that, I think we can renew our mind of what rest really is. Amen. <laughs> Hey man, that's fire. Just, that's good. Go back and listen to that again. <laughs> wow. Coming back to creation, God rested on the seventh day. That's so good. And yeah, man. Wow, that's that's convicting. That's convicting. I believe we should work and expect nothing in return. Mm. No matter what you're giving to God, you can't give him anything that he didn't already give you first. So even our giving, we're not even giving, we're just giving back. And Christ gave it all on the cross. So working from that place, not even expecting anything. And yeah, just like you're saying, God is so loving. God is so good. He, he, he does bless, right? He does bless and, and he will bless us when, he serve him, when we serve him. But I love that no matter what you did that day, no matter how hard that day was, how much you worked that day, like God structured his days. The sun's going to go down. It's going to get dark. And there's, there's a reset. At the end of every day, God structured night and day. And so we can always, you know, rest and, and get physical sleep as well. And sometimes too, that, that rest can just be uh, just an increment or, or just a moment. Just a moment of time in Christ provides so much peace in our souls. And sometimes it's working, it's laboring for an hour and then like get some rest. Mm -hmm. Take, Take a few moments, take three minutes, take five minutes, rest. Think about the goodness of God. Instead of pulling up your phone, scrolling through TikTok, looking at all this distractions that don't matter, just rest. Get that peace and then move forward labor, work, rest, whether it's, you know, throughout the day or at the end of the day too, we can uh, see those patterns that God puts in place. But sometimes we need to take it upon ourselves to put those patterns in throughout the day. You just work for two hours straight, give yourself five minutes, rest in Christ. And this level of surrender looks different according to each one and what God has, has put in front of us and what he calls us to, uh, to steward. Wow. I love the shirt that you're wearing too. It says to do my fa- career. And she's wearing a shirt that says career to do my father's will. And it's like, that's really what it is. Like life and what we do, like as far as like labor and even jobs, right? We all have a job, um, a job to do for the, for the kingdom of God. 
but it's a it's a calling it's a calling and that's what i see like we, we put career to do my father's will the father's will is the calling so and you know it's it i like this because andrew always shares this he's like you know i i feel like what our our labor or what we give to god it's like i don't expect nothing back it's just my offering it's my way of giving it's without expecting anything back and y'all know that's the power of like relationship because a lot of people they see uh a uh, God's uh, relationship with God as uh, transactional versus like relational. So, you know, going back to all this and, and, and just figuring out, okay, Lord, how do you want to use me? How can I find rest in you? Um, I, I think there's a few ways too. And one of them is uh, figuring out like what the will of God is. You know, we, we talk a lot about Romans 12. What is the, we want not being conformed to the world, not being influenced by the world. Right, another version says, "Not being influenced by the patterns of this world, uh, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God." So, when we can know what is the the good, acceptable, but perfect will of God, what is God's will, we can start aligning ourselves to find rest, because His will it is it is God's will for us to have peace. It is God's will for us to have joy. It is God's will for us to have rest. That's why Jesus was saying, hey, and, and you know, the context he gives in that Matthew 11 verse, like, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest, right? Like, that, the context of that verse is that there are a lot of things going on with, like, the religious folks, and people are saying this or that, the, the, the holy art thou Pharisees are out here just, like, just trafficking against them, like with discouragement and condemnation, which is not of God. Like condemnation can make you feel weary, right? And I think that's what the context that that Jesus is giving them, and that's in Matthew eleven. Then in Matthew twelve, Jesus is like, uh, he he's healing on the on the Sabbath day, and then here comes the condemnation against from the Pharisees, and Jesus is like, yo, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. So a lot of the times we think we find rest in a day. And that's a lot of religious folks today. No, we find rest in the Lord of the Sabbath, not the one that made the day of the Sabbath. And if we can find that, y'all, you will be set free. And that's 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 the battle today is, is knowing the context behind scripture and really knowing the truth. Because I believe a lot of people, they know what the Bible says. Like rest on the seventh day, rest on the on the Sabbath like God, right? Sabbath, the Saturday, you got to rest in that day, don't work. But then Jesus did healings. Jesus did miracles. It's so funny because there's a time where they condemned Jesus again on the Sabbath and another time, these uh, the Pharisees, and then Jesus, he, he claps right back at them. It was like, wait, don't y'all on the Sabbath like, uh, feed your, or uh, feed your, your, your herds. I think he, it says like you let your donkeys drink on the Sabbath. So you're telling all these other people to not do anything, but you guys are laboring. So it's also like, you can't have all 600 plus laws, right? And you're condemning people that they're not doing this or that, but you're not even doing 10 of the 600 in this moment. Like there's this level of also discernment on knowing like, what is God's will on our life? And I think that's one of the keys to to really finding rest, knowing God's will. Uh, you know, and even Andrew was just sharing this great example of like you can work for an hour, two hours, and then just take a few minutes, a moment to just rest in Christ, and He'll refresh in you, He'll rejuvenate you. And I, I really see that. I really feel uh, this word that there's a word that says, uh, "All you need is one touch. All you need is one encounter." one prayer, one praise. And I don't know about y'all, but like when the enemy's sending attacks, just praise God. There's a saying that praise confuses the enemy. So like the enemy's like looking at you like, well, how are you praising God even in the midst of your trial? Like they're confused. Cause like you're praising God, not based on your circumstance. You're praising God based on who he is. And I think that's another way to find rest is just like praising God. One touch, one moment, you know, one praise, one prayer, one encounter with the Holy Spirit, one encounter with the King. That's all we need to get us right back on track and get us focused back on the day. Because I think that's what the enemy wants to do is distract us, mm -hmm. right? If he can distract us, we start making decisions that are not of the Lord. And he could do that any moment. For me, any moment. I've gone through those days where it's like I felt like I wasn't as productive. I was wasteful and not fruitful. 
So I think that's why when we can focus on Jesus and find that rest in him, y'all, you start to really move. And here's the thing. we Sometimes we expect fruit right away from a seed we planted the same day. It, it doesn't happen like that. It's it's good decisions over a long period of time of consistency of taking care of it that allows that fruit to really be produced. Amen. Yeah. Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. Mm. In our labor, we we encounter we encounter Jesus, who who is the true Sabbath. He is the rest, and that's so good because God God doesn't just provide for us. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is the provider. Like God doesn't just give us rest. He is our rest. Christ is our rest. He he doesn't just give us strength. He is our strength. And this is what David says all throughout the Psalms. He says, the Lord, my strength. Hmm. So if I'm in Christ, I'm always strong. <laughs> it doesn't matter how, how I'm feeling because Christ is my strength. He is my rock. And I'm moving in Christ, in that strength. Hmm. And God just, God gives so abundantly. That's his promise is that, you know, whatever we need, he says that he supplies abundantly according to the riches in Christ Jesus. And if, if we are serving God and, and laboring for him, he promises, he promises that rest. Amen. I think this was like solid on like so many different angles of like what it means to be rested. Because I think we all have different definitions of it. I think sometimes people don't just need the spiritual revelation, they need the practical revelation. And I feel like we've gone through a few of those things on, on finding uh, rest in Christ. Amen. Yeah. yeah. What are you bound to? What are you bound to? And break those yokes. Break those yokes. You mentioned the truth. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, because sometimes we are bound to a lie. So how are these yokes broken? It's the truth of the word will reveal and break these yokes that we may be bound to or resting to, and it's his spirit. Like it says in Isaiah 61, it's the spirit of the Lord that comes on and just breaks these these yokes and these bondages that we are tied to. Christ will break every yoke. His word breaks every yoke. His spirit breaks every yoke. And he helps us to be bound to him and really truly, truly serve him from that place of uh, real joy. Amen, bro. Yeah, that's good. Um any last things on that? Because that's good. I think uh, giving a teaching on like breaking yokes was, is, is is so needed because I feel like that will be the first step to finding rest is like dealing with whatever is holding me captive, breaking that so that I can really enter into his presence, enter and, and give my heart to Christ. Yeah. 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 So good. Yeah. And sometimes like, just like you were sharing, we do, you know, we do get caught up and our day is going on and we may be distracted in our mind and really not laboring from the right place or being in the right place. And I think the more we like just plant those good seeds in our heart, in our mind, uh, just it helps us like almost like snap out of those mindsets. Mm -hmm. We renew our minds. And yeah, so sometimes it's like, hey, I got to snap out of it, right? You got to snap out of it, right? <laughs> Where are you right now? Yeah. Come back, come back, rest in Christ be there and then move forward from there wow that's so good praise god um uh, let's close out in prayer amen yeah you want to pray amen thank you jesus yes. we love you lord we thank you god for being our strength god i just want to pray god for anyone listening to this podcast oh lord jesus i just pray that you impart that supernatural rest. I pray for supernatural encounters with the Christ, the Lord of the Sabbath, O oh God. I pray that as they come to your feet, Jesus, and as they rest in you, you break off every yoke of bondage, every lie of the devil, every false identity or thing that they may be bound to, that they are working uh, from or for and I pray that they just come and they just rest and they just find freedom in you in your grace in your spirit in your peace oh Jesus 
just to know that you are the true rest, that fulfillment comes from you, peace comes from you, identity comes from you, our worth comes from you alone, Jesus. So I just thank you, God, for just imparting that rest today and tomorrow, and just to come, to come to accept that invitation in the morning, throughout the day, at night, just to come and learn from you, to open up your scriptures and to fall deeper in love with your word or just worship or not being too distracted with the world, but focused on what you have for each one individually, oh God. We worship you. We bless you, God. We give you all the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray.